Happy Sabbath and welcome to family worship. It's good to have you. We trust that your day has been going very, very well. You know, when we have a relationship with Christ, when we have that connection to the power of the source of all the powers in this world, then we are humble and but we fear nothing. That is why those who are strong would not flaunt their strength, but instead take care of the weak, take care of the weak. the signs, then it will be bad for us. We can't take cover under anyone 
or anything but the sovereign God of this world. Let me repeat for emphasis. We cannot find cover under any system, any establishment, any church, any leader, any family member. We cannot take cover under anything but God. There comes a time when we have to stand alone. There comes a time when we have to stand alone. And it's a good thing. And of course alone is quote unquote because we can't stand alone. Empty bag cannot stand up. Only with God can we stand. But for this context, don't depend on man. Don't depend on man. Because they will fail you. And it's crucial to understand that as we call ourselves Christians, many of us will be inclined to take shelter on our membership in the church. Many of us will in be inclined to take shelter in the po position that we hold in the church. Many of us will believe that we are shielded because of who we are. And where we attend, and what establishment we are members of. But don't be fooled. Don't be deceived. Mm -hmm. We are living in a time when deception is at its peak. Deception is at its peak. The Satan does not have to deceive those who don't who are not called by the name of Christ. Now Isaiah he tells us that in the last days seven women shall take hold of one man and they will say let us wear our own garments, let us eat our own food, all we want, all our desire is to be called by your name. That is interpreted to be Christians. Everybody will want to be called Christians, but do their own thing. Any, everybody would want to claim that they are Christ. That's all I want. Just I'm um, satisfied with the name Christians. But as for me, myself and I, I will do my own thing. Read it. You think it's my word? I don't speak my word here. It's Isaiah chapter 4. Go there and read it. Seven women shall take hold of one man. Woman in prophecy symbolized church. church. I've likened the daughter of Zion, Jeremiah 6, to a comely and a delicate woman. And we are on a trend we are showing as we string that silk thread we have not, we don't have the duty of stringing it. It's already strong, but we are following it. And so, if we say we are stringing the thread, it means we are following. 
we are following that single thread that runs through all the end time prophecy. May I dare to say that yes, it feels good to be a part of a congregation. It feels good to be part of an establishment, yes, it feels good, but feelings, feelings cannot be your answer, as feelings, emotion will fail you. Thank you for joining us. Happy Sabbath day. Glad that God's people all over the world recognize his commandments, recognize and acknowledge his Sabbath day. And of such, we are here to pray together to strengthen one another as we read and study together. And Allow the Holy Spirit to guide. Tell somebody, share the word. In the book Great Controversy, chapter 4, the topic is the wall lenses. Uh, it is on page 61. So I'm in chapter 4, so in the second paragraph I'm going to read a little. The history of God's people during the ages of darkness that followed upon Rome's supremacy is written in heaven, but they have little place in human records. Many things are not written. In human records. But they are written in heaven. Mm -hmm. Few traces of their existence can be found except in the accusations of their persecutors. It was the policy of Rome to obliterate every trace of dissent from her doctrines or decrees. Watch it now, we are on the beast. A series of the beast continues. The series of the beast continues. This is Rome in two phases. Papal Rome turned into pagan Rome. Pagan. Pagan, pagan Rome turns into papal Pal. Rome. Mm -hmm. Or political Rome turned into Ecclesiastical Rome, or in other words, Rome infiltrated God's church that was made of brass, the brass mountain. But because God would have two brass mountains according to Zechariah 6, that's where we are look that's what we have been looking at and hopefully you'll find some truth and some evidence in it that you can follow. Uh, Rome. So everything heretical, whether persons or writings 
she sought to destroy expressions of doubt or questions as to the authority of papal dogmas were enough to forfeit the life of rich or poor. Again, I don't want you to point back because this is not something of the past only. This is continuous <laughs> and it has taken on many and varied forms in our time under religion. Okay. So everything heretical, whether persons or writing, she sought to destroy. Expression of doubt or questions as to the authority of papal dogmas were enough to forfeit the life of rich or poor, high or low. Rome endeavored also to destroy every record of her cruelty toward dissenters. Papal councils decreed that books and writings containing such records should be committed to the flames. <laughs> If I see people like to burn so <laughs> he that burn it with the fire shall be burned with the fire. With the fire. <laughs> I love to burn. Ah, Rome endeavor also to destroy every record of her cruelty toward the centers. Papal Council decreed that books and writings containing such records should be committed to the flames. Before the invention of printing books were few in numbers and few number and in a form not favorable <coughs> for preservation. Therefore there were was little to prevent the Romanists from carrying out their purpose. No church within the limits of Romish jurisdiction was long left undisturbed in the employment of freedom of conscience. No sooner had the papacy obtained power that she stretched out her arms and crushed all that refused to acknowledge her sway. One after another, the churches submitted to her dominion. That's <laughs> why we look at the great apostasy. The darkness and those who should resist caved. Mm -hmm. Those who should protest caved. And you think it is of the past and we are we are just free now. In Great Britain, primitive Christianity had very early taken root. The gospel received by the Britons in the first century was then uncorrupted by Romish apostasy. Persecution from pagan empires, emperors, which extended even to these far off shores was the only gift that the first churches of Britain received from Rome. Many of the Christians feeling, fleeing 
from persecution in England found refuge in Scotland. Thence the truth was carried to Ireland and in all these countries it was received with gladness. When the Saxons invaded Britain, heathenism gained control. The conquerors disdained to be instructed by their slaves, and the Christians were forced to retreat to the mountains and the wild moors. Yet the light hidden for a time continued to burn in Scotland. Centuries later, it shone out with a brightness that extended to far distant land. From Ireland came the pious Columba and his co-laborers who gathering about them the scattered believers on the lonely island of Iona made this the center of their missionary labors. Among these evangelists was the observer of the Bible Sabbath. And thus this truth was introduced among the people. All right, so here we have the truth walking in darkness. Man will try, but God cannot fail. The same thing today. We are at a point in our history of God's church that the same tools or weapons are implemented to prevent the little light mm -hmm. <laughs> from shining. But it will shine. Pray with us in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we want to give you thanks and praise for this blessed Sabbath day. We want to thank you for your loving kindness and your care over your people. We thank you for the ministry of those who have gone on before us to shine the light in the dark places, the Waldens. We thank you that we can be standard bearers for you and that the enemy though he want to extinguish the fire the holy fire nor zeal and hide the light and be cloud the truth he has been vanquished he has failed for in the beginning you said let there be light and there was light and so it is today, the light will shine, whether you like it or not. Yes. And so we give you praise. Bless every member who is here to feast on your word. May your Holy Spirit guide us and hide us behind the cross, we pray. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Truly blessed to have you, part of our, our expedition here, mm -hmm. and we hope that all will go well. <clears throat> Hopefully, we don't have an issue. Yes. Seeing a little issue there already. Mm -hmm. Trying to reconnect. Okay. Well, 
We continue. One light is burning. Still good enough. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, let's sing a song. Uh, <coughs> this is family worship. And we give God praise through songs and prayers and reading. <coughs> Have a song. It's Troubled soul, lies 
in time of need. And I journey on with rapid speed. I'll help the sick and poor and weak and words of God. Kindness to them speak. Will you do the same? I see
Judgment is based on those who will run and say, Have I not done this? Have I not healed the sick? Have I not done missionary work? Have I not been have I not been a loyal member? loyal type pair and the big offering all of that yes is good if the motive is genuine but the inverse of that is that the same thing will testify that your character is unbecoming and therefore you should depart. We don't want any of us to hear that. <coughs> uh, just tempted to retry, just give me one second. If I can just
Nothing try. Nothing try. Nothing done. Let's go to the world right quick. So we are uh, thus continuing Zechariah again. If you're joining us Zachary. for the first time, we'll just read it. We're following the thread. I'm sorry. We're following the thread that runs through uh, all the prophecies. Of course, they run. It runs from Genesis to Revelation. But we are just focusing on when it, when it reaches the end of time. Don't be scared about the end time. Because it's built on the foundation of all the Bible prophecies or all the world from the beginning of Genesis to Revelation. And at our last meeting, <coughs> we examined the, <coughs> the uh, what we call <coughs> the valley or the space. Because what we have discovered is that God <coughs> is pointing out <coughs> that there's a problem with his last movement. We pointed that out in Matthew. We pointed that out in Ezekiel, Isaiah, all of them, end time prophecies. But we are zeroing in on Zechariah. Because Zechariah clearly clears the way for us and shows that it was not fulfilled in his time, and he refers us, as we say, we have to look at different clues. If it doesn't plainly say it is for the time of the end, then you have to look for something that puts that particular revelation in the end time. And what we have seen that tie this to the end is mainly the fact that the two, that church is in prophecy, uh, <coughs> mountains, mountains in prophecy, it's church, or kingdom. But when it says church or kingdom, we have to see the evidence out of that particular revelation, whether it's talking about uh, a corrupted church or a pure church, so to speak. <coughs> whether it's talking about um, a false or apostate movement or a movement that God is working with and albeit they are not good people, good, quote unquote, but God is working with them to bring the others because he doesn't dismiss anybody. He doesn't. We can go ahead and dismiss who we want, but God doesn't dismiss anybody. He does not. And if you feel that <coughs> this is not the right place, these are not the right things for you, you want something smoother, well, well, with all due respect, we respect your feeling and we respect your decision. But we would choose if you would remain and, and see what you can, if you can pick sense out of nonsense. Because many believe all this is nonsense. All right, so in Zechariah 6, we just read it in your hearing again. The Bibles are open. Please open your Bibles with us. That's all we can ask. Zechariah 6, 1 to 8. We'll read it again in your hearing. Okay, and I turned and looked up <coughs> and lifted up my eyes and looked. And behold, there came four chariots out from between two mountains. And the mountains were mountains of brass. In the first chariot were red horses. And in the cha second chariot 
black horses. And in the third chariot, white horses. And in the fourth chariot, grizzled and bay horses. Then I answered and said unto the angel that talked with me, What are these, my lord? And the angel answered and said unto me, These are the four spirits of the heavens, which go forth from standing before the Lord of all the earth. The black horses which are therein go forth into the north country, and the white go after them, go forth after them, and the grizzled go forth toward the south country. And the bay went forth and saw to go, that they might walk to and fro through the earth. And he said, Get you hence, walk to and fro through the earth. So they walked to and fro through the earth. Then cried he upon me, and spake unto me, saying, Behold, these that go toward the north country have quieted my spirit in the north country. Alright. <clears throat> so let's go. We are continuing. You can catch up with some of our past explanations. But yes, we are between the two mountains, and... It is really describing the period of time from the Apostolic Church, the history of the Apostolic Church. It's describing the falling away and the movement that God um, chose to show that took place. Uh, all the way up to his second coming. But before his second coming, he shows that there will be another mountain of brass. Uh, so as we looked at the, the, uh, the valley, we, we saw again the beast show, showed up there, wearing uh, the word of God. God's truth were compromised, were trampled upon, and... It was paganized. And hence, that's what we saw, um, <coughs> that immediately after Christ set up the apostles and set up his church officially, remember the official church when Christ comes, was not the apostolic church, it was the, 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 the Jewish church. And of course, all the... The, the, the dignitaries, all the leaders, and the, the establishment crucified our Lord, crucified the Savior, the establishment, the church crucified Christ because they were the one who pushed the Jews pushed the Romans, and <clears throat> the Romans come on with their brutality. However, so that's the history. It's playing out in broad daylight, so we cannot run. Last time I told you that if we make our bed in hell or in the bottom of the sea, then God will find us and, and show us what he has for us today. So we can't run, we can't run, we can run, but we can't hide. And that's why he said, if you go there, so run, but he will be there with you. All right, so, <clears throat> as we see the falling away from God's first, stop, first mountain of brass in the midst of the established uh, movement, the, the Jewish organization, that there was a focus for the light of truth, or the light of the gospel truth. All right. So <clears throat> we saw this um, falling away in, in, in the papacy, um, the pagans who martyred and, and savaged the, 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 the leadership, and the more they savage them, is the more the church grew. <clears throat> but eventually, they buy out some of the leaders, those who they did, the newer ones, because they, remember, they martyred those, the original. But as soon as the church 
continues, if they fail to hold on to God, Israel always fail to hold on to what God gives them. Because for some reason, what is around, what is glittering around, seem look better and easier, easier life than what they should, what Christ told them to do. So yes, eventually there was a falling away, and we have the, <coughs> the papacy um, in the book Great Controversy. We have a reading here. <coughs> um, Let me go back there one quick time. <coughs> uh, <coughs> early right no, before we reach early writing, so going back there, sorry. Uh, <coughs> so before we get to the horses, we are about to um, go through the horses in a more detailed manner. Uh, let us just look, refresh ourselves. Of course, it says, after... Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall uh, be diverse one from all the other kingdom. Remember, we are looking in the time between the, 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 the first apostolic church and, the, and taking us to the, the coming of Christ, the second coming of Christ. So follow <laughs> carefully now. So this is what we are finding there. Um, The, it said, the fourth kingdom and shall devour the whole earth and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings <coughs> that shall arise and another shall arise after them and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three. So here is the birth of the papacy. <coughs> it's really pagan Rome changing into um, ecclesiastical uh, or papal church. The church disguised herself under uh, pagan described this guys ourselves on the church uh, religion and buy into the apostolic church. That's what we have. And Daniel, of course, Daniel tells us about that. Anyhow, we, we think we have <coughs> done our due diligence on that. What is the meaning of the symbolic horses and the carriages? Let's do a little more detail as we look at these individual horses and carriages. These individual horses and carriages. Uh, we'll just move it along as we look on them. Okay. So according to verse 5, you all read for us. I'll just take it. And the angel answered and said unto me, these are the four spirits of the heavens which go forth from standing before the Lord of all the earth. Mm -hmm. So here we are looking, we are told that these chariots are sent by God. These chariots are sent by God to do a work in the earth. Listen carefully to God's um, God's, uh, what do you call it, direction or his instruction. Mm -hmm. 
These are the four spirits before God. They stood before him and he sent them. So the only thing that God sends to the earth to go in various directions is his movement, his church. That's why we have missionaries. A church with a soul-saving truth. Remember this. The church gets the message and then the church is sent. Now, horses. Horses, according to Zechariah 14. Remember, the Bibles are open. Zechariah 14. Let's break this down. We're unpacking this and then bring it together. In that day shall there be upon the bells of the horses holiness unto the Lord. That is a clue right there that these horses are, symboli are symbolic of God's people. No literal horses without holiness unto the Lord. He is referring to his people in that day. Uh, it illustrate the uh, symbols as God used them to illustrate various lessons. Horses are quite prominently employed in the scriptures as we have looked at them from time to time, Revelation and so on. And being in every instant perfectly adapted, of course, to the circumstance or the situation. In this condition, they represent people for the sounding of their bells. The sounding of their bells. <coughs> Just reduce that a bit. As the sounding of their bells, holiness unto the Lord. <coughs> sounding of